Hey, what's up? My name's Justin, Proximity FPV, and I just wanted to bring a quick review and kind of overview and just a few of my thoughts on the new Betaflight F7. Um, I'm having a lot of trouble finding any information about this board online, um, and that's including forums and other things. There's not even open firmware on this board right now. I apologize for my camera angle and everything. This is kind of my first technical review. Uh, just a quick background, I'm a computer support technician at an ISP, so I have a big networking background, but I got into drones about six months ago, and uh, thanks to people like Josh Bardwell, um, I've kind of been obsessing about it. Um, I really want to push... Um, Basically, uh, I want to get on the 3.3 common filters on one of the latest boards, you know, that's kind of future-proof for any other beta flight things, um, before I just kind of try out a full KISS setup. I'm just trying to figure out exactly where I want to be as far as, you know, uh, you know who whose flight controller is going to give me the kind of flight characteristics that I care about. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, with beta flight, if people kind of push it, hard enough and we get the settings just right uh we can probably kind of simulate the same kind of feel uh that fi freestyle pilots kind of um brag about as far as kiss goes i'm still going to go on the kiss bandwagon eventually and just really put some work and effort into that but um yeah anyway so let's take a look at the board uh so Thank God, all the all the main soldering pads are are on the top of the board. Uh, Betaflight F3 was just total pain in the butt um, to solder up, but you just have your battery leads on the bottom. You can see it's got a 1.2 back on there, five volts. Uh, OSDs on the bottom. Um, comes with, of course, everything Betaflight can do. It has four UARTs um, compared to most F4s, which have three. I don't know if they're all broken out. This isn't, uh, you know, super detailed. You can always go to the, the website to kind of get a better overview. Um, but basically, you can see it has a MP8000 uh, gyro right there on the board. And then it's got the ICMP, whatever, the, the 32 kilohertz, you know, gyro on the top there. It's covered in a shell and soft mounted in some gel. Um, you know... This is why I'm making this review is because this board is kind of frustrating. First of all, there's no firmware uh, for this board right now, so if you brick it, you're you're done. Um, there's none of the none of the custom firmware that supports common filters on 3.3 that people have been releasing. There's nothing for this board right now. Um, also, um, I know this is kind of common knowledge, but Betaflight is not optimized to run on a flight controller a F7. Excuse me. Um, so my CPU load at 3232 is 100% locked in. Um, there's no overclock feature with F7. And there's also talk about F7 is not currently supporting a D-Shot protocol. Um, if I could get common filters to work on it, I guess that wouldn't be a concern since you probably want to run common on multi-shot 3216 or 3232. Um, so anyways, just a few quick things. The MP8000, I think a lot of people are opting to use that over this newer board, and you can disconnect this little ribbon cable from the side of the board there, and then it's just secured, the shell and the gel and all that stuff is secured over the F7 by these little screws on the bottom. Um, you can save 2.5 grams by removing that gyro, so if you're going to roll with the, you know, the MP8000 anyways, um, you might end up taking that off. I'm not going to. I'm not super stickler over a couple grams here and there, but um, yeah, that's definitely an option. I've seen people doing that. Um, well, at least a one person I know who's been talking about this board. Um, so uh, just a quick thing I wanted to say about it. Uh, I have been able to get it to run on 1616 uh, kilohertz. Uh, with dynamic filters turned on and, you know, all the, all it, you know, um, accelerometer, all that kind of jazz. And it runs at about 70% CPU load. I don't know how it's going to fly or if I'm just going to kick it back down to 8.8 8 versus 1616. But I'm going to go ahead and try it out. 1616 with dynamic filters turned on. And I'm just going to hope that they release some common filter beta flight firmware for this sooner rather than later. Um, because it is kind of the reason I purchased it. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great board. It's beautiful, awesome. It is a little pricier than most uh, flight controllers. It's at about 60 bucks. 
um, but you figure you are paying for kind of the, the double gyro feature. Um, it's easy to turn that off and on. Oscar Lang has a great uh, kind of overview of some of the features of this board, but he also includes the command line uh, that's required to, you know, choose which gyro you need to use. Um, and I figure Betaflight soon enough will be focusing on the F7, especially, I think, because they've released this board, Betaflight F7. Uh, if they want it to be popular and successful, I imagine the devs will probably want to put some time into optimizing Betaflight for the F7. Hopefully that's done by the time they release uh, 3.3. Um, and that's, I think that's happening around March, but, um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of bummed because I heard they are kind of getting rid of common filters, um, at least how they're presented now. If you were to download a custom hex that takes advantage of common filters, that I guess is going to be pulled back as far as the kind of filtering they're going to actually release in the release version of Betaflight 3.3. Um, and the reason is, I think, because they don't want people to overclock their F4 boards. Um, and that kind of bums me out, because I would love to get the, you know, the most, the best filtering that I can. Um, and I don't mind overclocking a CPU to do that. Um, maybe they need to just optimize it for the F7 and move on if common filters are going to, you know, kind of bridge that gap um, as far as flight characteristics on especially noisy quads and stuff like that. Um, short circuit FPV has been coming out with a lot of stuff where he's testing, uh, you know, common filters. I, I need to look into that more, get more specific stuff, because if he's running common filters on an F7 right now, I'm curious if he's running it at 32, 32. I don't think that's possible at this moment. Um, so yeah, just kind of a a quick review over this board and just kind of a quick buyer beware as far as trying to jump on the F7 bandwagon. I figured it since this was a beta flight board, I was going to be, you know, really happy with kind of the support and the features that I would be able to unlock when it comes to beta flight itself. Um, but it's been, you know, quite a bit the opposite. Um, so yeah, you can get this from, I believe, Amazon, and I believe there's there's more and more sites that are carrying this board right now, but it is, you know, it, it, I think it just started shipping last week. Um, so yeah, this is my first technical, you know, uh, kind of YouTube submission. So um, yeah, hope it's all right. I'll, I'll take a look at editing. Um, yeah, this is Justin, and uh, y'all have a great day.